What a day, eh? You look lonely. Dying for the right cause is the most human thing we can do. Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. For my old subscribers, welcome back. Um, for my new subscribers, I'm wearing a mask to somewhat hide my identity. Um, I am a first responder and the high level officials for the city I work for are fairly left leaning. Um, I would like to keep my professional career and the content I produce on this channel separate because people obligatory make the comment that I'm copying administrative results. Before we get into the rifle, why is it my main squeeze? Well, simple. Um, I don't know when you're watching this video, but for me, the uh, ATF brace rolling went into effect uh, about three or four days ago. My old main squeeze, which was my 10-3, Mark 18-ish, whatever you want to call it, is currently defunct. Unless there's some kind of major change in the ruling or law sometime in the near future, this is my main squeeze. Before you start typing away on your keyboard, I in no way agree with the law. It is definitely an infringement. Hilariously enough, they're forcing everyone to use more lethal rifles with better terminal ballistics in the name of safety. The ATF has proven time and time again that they're willing to kill innocent people, whether it be women and children, um, pretty much anyone who they deem is breaking their arbitrary rules. So. If you have an internet footprint of any kind with your weapons, uh, whether it be Instagram, YouTube, or anything else, I would highly advise you follow, follow the law to a T so you, you don't give them the, that opportunity or excuse to come and hurt you or your family or your pets. With that being said, let's get into the rifle. So for those of you who have been watching my, my channel for a while, you'll recognize this rifle. I did a video on it some time ago, as I stated before. I have a Surefire uh, three-prong, which is pinned and welded now. I recommend if you're gonna go down this route of a 13.7 or 14.5 or 13.9 with a pin and weld, you find a competent gunsmith that knows what they're doing. 
Um, with the 13.7 and 13.9, I, you're going to have to use spacers to get that muzzle device to get you to the overall length of 16 inches on your barrel. Um, so again, find a competent gunsmith that knows what they're doing, can make sure your muzzle device stays concentric, especially if you're going to run a suppressor. So riding on that muzzle device, I have a Surefire 300 SPS. This is currently the only Surefire suppressor that I own. I will probably be get, looking into getting an RC2 uh, sometime in the near future, simply because the 300 SPS is kind of long and heavy, and it just adds more weight to the end of this rifle. Moving back from there, I'm running a Ballistic Advantage 13.7 Hanson profile barrel. The big selling point for me is gonna be their gas blocks come pinned to the barrel from Ballistic Advantage, so they drill it out and give you the little roll pin to pretty much pin your gas block to your barrel for um, bomb-proof installation. Technically, you don't have to do that, but for fighting rifles, I think it's a good idea. This is an SLR rail. This is the rail uh, specifically made for 13.7 barrels. It comes up to the muzzle device and gives a very nice Nice monolithic look. Um, I like that. It's kind of like an OCD uh, attention and detail kind of thing. I recently upgraded to the Surefire uh, 640 Pro. Uh, their Pro line of flashlights pretty much swayed me over to the side of Surefire. If you're familiar with my channel, I typically run stream lights. Being as how the Pro Series lights come with mounting hardware for M-Lock and Picatinny out of the box, that makes the price tag a little more reasonable for me. I think this one was like three something, and then once I added the pressure pad and tail cap. I ended up spending about $500 to get all this stuff to my door. So expensive lighting system, uh, especially considering you're only gonna be using white light for short instances. So I haven't had time to do like a real comparison uh, between my stream lights and the Surefire. Um, but I mean, Surefire has their reputation to consider. So it's part of the price tag. And I went ahead and upgraded to a Surefire finally. My IR device, I'm running a D-Ball. Um, A3, it's the one with the visible laser and IR laser and illuminator, so makes zeroing a little bit easier for me. Uh, right here I'm running a BCM angled uh, vertical grip, um, allows me to get a nice C-clamp on my rifle and maintain my kind of, my arm in a kind of neutral position. I don't like having to like contort my wrist and arm like this just to get a good C-clamp. I like being able to pull the rifle into me and have a little bit of uh, room here to get a good purchase when I'm pulling it into my body. Back from there, the upper receiver. This is gonna be an FN cage code mark upper receiver that I got some time ago from Throwbed Armament. Um, everything seems to be working great on it, so no problems with that. Inside, I'm running a Aero Precision bolt carrier group. Aero Precision makes very good parts, um, especially for the money. This bolt carrier group has been running fine. Um, as you can see, it's absolutely filthy and coated in carbon, so you can't see the Aero Precision logo on there, but it is an Aero Precision. I've had no issues with it. Since my 10-3 is kind of defunct, I will probably be uh, throwing my Sharps Rifle Company bolt carrier into this rifle. The charging handle, this is going to be the Geise Super Charging Handle. Um, it's not the Airborne one, so it has the full-size uh, latches here. I'm not doing anything too high speed, so I'm not too worried about this thing getting caught. Um, and I haven't had it get caught on anything, so no issues with that. Um, I like it. I think it helps with the seal back here for like gas blowback. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, so the lower receiver, this is a Savage MSR lower receiver. Savage made AR-15 lower receivers at one time. I am not for sure if they still do. Academy, which is like a big box sporting goods store, used to sell their strip lower receivers for like $80. Like four of these um, a while back and I've just been using them for AR-15 builds. Uh, I'm just running a mil spec uh, safety selector. My actual trigger is from Palmetto State Armory and it is their nickel boron uh, coated trigger. It's a little bit slicker and crisper than our standard mil spec. Um, I definitely can shoot it faster than our standard mil spec. I haven't felt the need to upgrade to a better single stage trigger for this rifle yet. The pistol grip, uh, everyone's gonna kind of have their preference on pistol grip. Uh, this is the Magpul, I believe it's the K. Um, it's like the sleekest, like thinnest pistol grip they offer. You can see how sleek it is right here. Very vertical uh, grip angle. I like being able to get my hand really wrapped around the pistol grip. Gives me a sense of control when I'm shooting, especially fast. I'm just running a mil spec buffer, buffer tube, and spring. I haven't had any issues with it. This rifle is probably one of the best gas, if not the best gas AR-15s I've ever had the pleasure of shooting. That probably has more to do with the ballistic advantage gas port and barrel, but um, that's what I'm running back here as far as my buffer system. My stock, this is a Magpul STR stock. Very similar to the B5 Systems Bravo. It has the compartments on both sides to carry batteries or whatever else you want to stick in there. The sighting system. So let's start with the mount. This is an American Defense Manufacturing Delta mount. It is a QD mount, as you can see. It has a little latches here. It has locks integrated into these latches, so 
if your gear accidentally hooks it, you don't unhook your scope and send it flying. So I like that, a little bit of um, redundancy as far as your mounting system goes. Front is where it gets interesting. So the front ring is a replacement front ring from um, American Defense Manufacturing with an RMR plate up here so you can attach you know, any micro red dot with the RMR footprint. Interestingly enough, they um, announced that the Acro footprint would be coming out, but I had this uh, Steiner MPS for a couple weeks and I got tired of waiting, so I just went ahead and ordered the RMR um, front ring, and then I got an adapter plate from Primary Machine. Put the Primary Machine adapter plate on there, torqued it down, put some Loctite. I've had no issues with it. Um, that seg segues us nicely into my new dot up here. If you saw my original video on this rifle, I was running kind of a budget sight mark uh, red dot, and it was it was it ran fine. It worked good. Um, but since this rifle kind of became my like main rifle, I felt the need to upgrade to a little bit better micro red dot. Um, so I went with an enclosed emitter, as you can see on the Steiner MPS. I'm not too big on the enclosed emitter versus open emitter. However, when it comes to a rifle. Um, I think that closed emitter is the way to go simply because you get a lot more dust and debris on your rifle because you're constantly carrying it around and it's more exposed to the elements than say um, your concealed carry handgun that stays in your holster under your clothes. Um, so I'm running a, a Hollow Sun 407C which is open emitter obviously on my concealed carry handgun. Um, but like I said when it comes to mounting a micro red dot on your rifle I think it, it makes more sense to go closed emitter. So. Got the Steiner MPS. I don't have a whole lot of time behind it. I've only had it for a few weeks and I haven't put that many rounds to it, but from what I can tell, it is an excellent micro red dot. The glass is super clear. The dot is nice and crisp and the night vision setting is excellent. I'll, I'll be doing like a further in-depth review on this site once I get more rounds to it and a little bit more time behind it. My LPVO, this is a Vortex Viper 1-6 to uh, Gen 2. It is a very good LPVO for the money. The glass is clear. Um, the illumination is red dot bright and I've had no issues with it. Um, I will say that the uh, magnification ring is quite stiff and it just makes it a little bit harder if you're also not running a throw lever on your LPVO. I mean, for me, I pretty much leave it on six. Anything within red dot range, I use my micro red dot for. But yeah, guys, that pretty much rounds out my rifle here. <sighs> I guess this is it. We're all gonna be running 13.7s and 14.5s and 13.9s. Um, if you don't just get a 16 inch. Like I said before, they're forcing us to use uh, more combat effective weapons anyways I uh, appreciate you guys for watching if you're new here like and subscribe um, please hit the subscribe button and allow all notifications um, I'm not too sure where this YouTube thing is gonna go um, if I learned anything from YouTube in the past it's that uh, th they're probably gonna retroactively go back and start striking people's videos um, that are featuring braces so I mean, I guess we're just going to kind of see how that goes, guys. Um, I know it sucks, but I think we all need to kind of come together and try to work through it as a community. Um, because, you know, this boat has a lot of holes, but we're all in it together. So.